Nikon kills the DSLR, but there's still one thing holding back the transition to mirrorless. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me. For tea time today, we have a little bit of Misty Morning and Focus combination. You know, I love that bergamot and the zing, and it's so good, so good, guys. Hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking video, talking photo, talking tech. Today is a photo day. We're gonna be talking about Nikon. And as I said, they have now killed the DSLR. They discontinued it, that's it, that's the end. Canon is still making them, Pentax, there's others, but Nikon has killed the DSLR. And as I was saying, there is one thing that's still holding back that transition for a lot of photographers from DSLR to mirrorless. And I'm gonna get into that before the end of this video. Before we start, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, why the hell not? Go check them out, they're free. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you find this information helpful or entertaining or whatnot, you wanna just say thank you, you could do so by clicking the little thank you button down below or simply becoming a member. I really would appreciate it. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. And also subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and click this little bell icon over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. So. Let's get right into it. Now, after a history of over 60 years of making SLRs, finally Nikon has said, you know what? We're halting production of the DSLR. Some people have said that the smartphone or the iPhone specifically will eventually just replace the DSLR. Will that happen? I don't know. We need to bear in mind that even though Canon will continue making DSLRs, the writing is on the wall. They stated in December of last year, that the 1DX Mark III will be the very last professional DSLR camera that they will produce. That is the end of it. Now, I'm personally waiting for the Canon EOS R1 so that I can replace all of my 1Ds over there as the R1 will be their flagship or their replacement to the 1D series. So I'm excited about that and I wanna see what they do with it. Now, according to the Nikkei Asia report, I was reading through something that was, in my personal opinion, very interesting that talked about this move away from DSLR as we see Nikon has just closed production. They are no longer doing it. They do state that the Nikon D6 will be the very last professional DSLR and the D3500 will be Nikon's last consumer body. Now, specifically, they're quoted in saying, Japanese camera maker Nikon will withdraw from the single lens reflex camera business and shift towards digital offerings amid intensifying competition from smartphone cameras. Very interesting, back to the idea that an iPhone or Samsung or any type of smartphone will replace eventually the DSLR. They continue by saying, it now plans to focus resources on mirrorless cameras, which have become mainstream products on the back of more advanced digital technologies. And that is absolutely the case. We see mirrorless has been taking over DSLR. At first it was 20%, then 30%, 40%. Finally, it hit a 50-50 sales. And now we see mirrorless are above in sales to DSLRs. So no matter how we look at it, this era of professional photography is coming to a close. Now Nikon first created their SLR way back in 1959 with the Nikon F. And then in 1999, Nikon moved to DSLR with their Nikon D1. And then right around 2011, Nikon moved into the mirrorless space with their Nikon 1. Now that camera was one of those cameras that I always thought was neutered. The engineers weren't allowed to stretch their legs, let's say. It was very stifled in my personal opinion, and the sales numbers reflected that. Now all this changed in 2018 where Nikon came up with their Z series. Nikon decided to go all in, so to speak, when it comes to the mirrorless market. And by so doing, they've given their engineers room to work to play, to make something outstanding. And in my personal opinion, the new Nikon flagship, their Z9, is probably one of the best mirrorless professional bodies out there as of right now. 
It is absolutely stellar. So as the production of DSLRs wane, I can see it is inevitable. The outcome will be the iPhone or Samsung phone or smartphone will eventually replace the DSLR. Many DSLR shooters have already moved or switched over to mirrorless. And Sony has been the catalyst, let's say, for that. Their A6 series as well as their A7 series has just brought a lot of blood from DSLR over into mirrorless. And I think the main camera, and I've always said this, was the A7 Mark III. That camera was probably the biggest draw, let's say, of new blood or new photographers into the Sony ecosphere. It was absolutely a perfect value proposition. For under $2,000, you had a full frame mirrorless camera that just threw in the kitchen sink. Once again, a value proposition, second to none. And for me, I was recommending that camera, even though I'm a Canon shooter, to many new photographers that are moving into the professional space. Because for under $2,000, they were getting a lot for their money. Now, since Canon and Nikon have nearly equaled Sony when it comes to their mirrorless offerings, it's a little bit more challenging to say, this is the clear winner. This is the camera that I think that you should purchase. So instead of me recommending an A7 Mark III or an A7 Mark IV, I'm just not doing that anymore. I'm more looking at these cameras as what lens do you have currently in your kit? And can you adapt that lens to the camera of your choice? It doesn't matter if it's Nikon or Sony or Canon. All these mirrorless cameras are so good today that it's very hard, once again, to select. I would almost say that people are now moving into the mirrorless market, not saying this one is better than that one, but what camera do I currently have and which lenses do I currently have that I want to adapt and not have to buy all new glass. Canon has made it super simple with their RF EF adapter that is just unbelievably stellar. So people that have EF glass can move into an RF body with no problem. And of course, Nikon has done the same. Now, when it comes to smartphones, I think that for social media photos, I think a smartphone is more than sufficient. But for example, on the iPhone side, does the portrait mode or the cinema mode, do they do a good job? Well, kind of, sort of, they do produce okay images, photos, video, or whatnot, but they're just 100% outmatched by a professional with a proper camera. So while it is good, it's just simply not there yet. Now, computational photography is the future. And with every iteration of computational photography, as these algorithms get better and better and better, and the processors get stronger and stronger, there's a lot more that can be done in pre-production, let's say, when the image is being taken in the camera itself to create amazing professional-esque type of photos. And that's what we have been seeing with computational photography that we see in these smartphones. So you might be asking the question, hey, Joe, do you think that DSLRs are truly dead as of right now? And in my personal opinion, I think the answer to that is no, absolutely no. And I do think that DSLRs will be on the market, especially in the used market, for a decade or more to come. And people will continue to purchase these cameras. There's going to be a lot of photo purists out there that will not move to mirrorless. They will stick with DSLR. The same thing holds true back in the move from film to digital. There has to be a reason to move from film to digital, from digital or DSLR to mirrorless. Now, these mirrorless cameras are getting better and better and better, but... As I said from the very beginning of this video, coming round robin full circle, there is one thing that is holding the purists back from moving into mirrorless. And in my personal opinion, that is the EVF. Now, why do I say that? The way I see it, the EVF is that one thing that the majority of DSLR purists always go back to when saying, I don't want to move from my DSLR to a mirrorless system. The EVF is one of those things that just doesn't look the same as an OVF. And in my personal opinion, I still like my OVF. 
Now, is there a place? Is there a reason to use an EVF? Yes. An EVF does provide an augmented reality, a WYSIWYG type of experience. So when you look out of that EVF, what you see is what you get. So if there's any type of corrections to lighting, maybe there's a LUT put on, whatever, exactly what you see out of that EVF is exactly what you're getting, period. Now, the problem is very simple as I see it. It's twofold. Number one, resolution, and number two, refresh rate. That's it. For example, if I look out of my Canon EOS R and I am seeing my scene moving around, well, it looks and feels very digital. It is not smooth as it's moving. And God forbid I move too quickly throughout the scene, start getting that jagged stutter stepping type of thing. It's just not smooth. It doesn't look like if you're just simply looking out an OVF. Now, remember, an OVF system is just simply like the end or the top or the lens at the end of a periscope, let's say. So what's coming in through the lens is being reflected off mirrors to come out of the OVF. So what you're seeing is exactly what the lens is seeing. Nothing more, nothing less. No changes, nothing is done. So when you use an EVF, yes, it's a little bit easier because once again, it's WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. When you look out an OVF, you kind of really need to know what you're doing because what you see is not what you get when you pull the trigger. But once again, in my personal opinion, how this is solved is with resolution and frame rate. If they were to bump the resolution on these EVFs up to 5 million plus dots of resolution and go to or over 480 hertz, that is what I believe would be that magic number or faster once again, and increase the processor on the camera itself. So you end up with zero blackout and absolutely zero of this stutter stepping when you're moving through a scene very quickly. I think at that point, mirrorless will have crossed the road, so to speak. And a lot of those DSLR purists will say, you know what? I'm okay with this. What I see out of that EVF is identical to what I would see out of the OVF, but with that augmented reality. Now, bear this in mind, guys, bear this in mind. Humans can perceive flicker artifacting, let's say, at up to 500 hertz. This is a lot higher than what scientists originally thought. They thought that, yeah, if you have a 60 hertz monitor or 120, even 120, a 240 hertz monitor, you wouldn't see any flickering. Well, after a lot of scientific research, we have found that the human eye can see that flicker up to 500 hertz. So that would make sense why some photographers that are very sensitive to it, when they look through the EVF, they can kind of feel and see that flicker, let's say, and it just doesn't feel right. It feels very digital. So once again, I do think that if we were to move those EVF to something that looks very much so like an OVF, just with that augmented reality onto it, I think that would allow those DSLR purists to move into mirrorless and feel confident in doing so. Anyways, guys, I wanna know your thoughts. What do you think about all this? As I always say, if you enjoy this type of content, please throw it a thumbs up so that I know to make more of it. Also, as I said before, subscribe to the channel and click this little bell icon so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Love you all.